Would you welcome our guest for the weekend, Coach Steve Hagen. From New, the New York Jets. From the New York Jets. What's going on? Hey, before I forget it, <clears throat> uh, um, Coach has a couple books. In fact, this is how we became acquainted. I bought these books, and he called the church. He said, hey, I understand uh, Pastor Doug and, and also the football coach bought some books. He said, I'm available to talk to the team of the church, and I took them right up on it. And uh, we've become good friends since. So on, the, on your way out, if you want to pick these up, um, uh, any, any, uh, any of the money from this goes for uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes Camp um, scholarships. In fact, when you spoke at Bedford, um, I don't know if you know this, but I think about six or $700 worth of books sold. And uh, we, we scholarship 31 athletes to Fellowship of Christian. Saved 31 lives right there. And 31 of our football players came forward and accepted Jesus Christ as their savior. And, uh, Isn't that cool? And I'll tell you what, we took a, when we started there, we took a uh, two and eight program and then went uh, four and six and then five and five in this last year. They were nine and one, and I think a lot of it had to do with, with what the Lord's doing in those young men's oh, lives. No doubt. Yep, yep. No doubt. No, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, parenting, and uh, um, but I've I've listened to you this weekend and and also uh, you know in our previous times, and I've watched that two things have moved your heart. The two things, I have this theory that says you can tell a lot about a man by what makes him angry and what makes him cry. And there are two things now I've seen that when you talk about, you get a little choked up. <laughs> and one is your family. I watched that interview you did in, uh, in Manhattan. Um, and, and you talked about your family and you kind of got a little flaklempt, which would be the Yiddish word in Manhattan. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then at, at Lima Senior, one of the boys said, Coach, you got a motto to live by. And he said, yeah. He said, uh, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Then he turns to our coach and he says, is it okay if I say that? <laughs> coach says, yeah, go for it. Those are the two things. Now, you, you, you've played ball. You were an All-American. You've coached uh, the highest level. But uh, those are the two things that are the most important to you, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Because really, at the end of the day, it's the only thing that matters the refrigerator in your kitchen doesn't matter, you know. Breaks down, you go get a new one. If your kid breaks down, it's hard to go get a new one, so. And the only way to keep them, uh, keep your children on the right track, keep yourself on the right track is your relationship with Jesus Christ, so then they get a relationship with Jesus Christ because they have to own it. I mean, we, you know, like, a friend of mine said he had a drug problem, and I, I think I had the same drug problem. My uh, parents drugged me to church, <laughs> drugged me to practice, they drugged me to school, but they, they drugged me. And I think that's what we have to do as parents. We have to, sometimes we have to drag our kids places they don't want to go because they've never been there. And um, I think it's real important, so make your kids drug addicts. Drag them around. Yeah. Yeah. Proverbs 22, 6 says, start children off on the way they should go. And even when they're old, they will not return from it. Now, it's interesting that that word, the way, or what's translated the way they should go in the Hebrew has that at its root, a verb that talks about archery, about bending the bow. And when an ancient archer would, uh, would, would get a bow, they didn't go to uh, uh, Dick's Sporting Goods. They would go to a tree, cut down a tree, and dry it out and bend it. And no two bows ever shot alike. And I don't think it does any injustice to the scripture at all to say what you need to do is see which way your kid bends. How has God designed this kid? An ancient archer would never go into battle with somebody else's bow. He has to know his bow. Because every bow would be unique and every child is unique. And so we have to adjust our strategy and the way we parent based upon each kid. We, we've got four or five things we want to say to parents uh, right out of scripture that are our responsibility, all under the category of love. Our loving, unconditionally loving our children is the most important thing we do. But if we're going to unconditionally love them, we're going to do these things. The first of which is to teach. Proverbs 1, 8 and 9 says, listen, my son, to your father's instruction. Do not forsake your mother's teaching. And, and the way we teach, you can't just teach one way. 
you know, with, with a punitive, uh, uh, demanding way. Uh, Paul says in Ephesians 6, fathers, don't exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. We teach. Now, I think I've got this, Coach. I've heard you say it. Every one of the assemblies, <laughs> what you teach, now he's tight ends, Coach. And tight ends, you, you call them freaks because they've got to catch like a receiver and block, uh, what, what, what's that? Catch and run like a receiver, block like a beast because we're, uh, we block the best athletes on the field, the defensive ends. I don't know if all y'all know football or not, but we'll give you a little lesson. Football 101 right here. Tight ends line up on the line of scrimmage, and they're kind of like an offensive lineman, and they, they catch and run like receivers. And um, You maybe heard of Jimmy Graham or Ben Watson or Tony Gonzalez. Those are tight ends. They're elite, elite athletes. They're 6'5", 6'6", 255, 60 pounds. They run 4'6", and catch. So I say, catch and run like a receiver, block like a beast, because you have to, or you won't be on the team. And what you teach them is they have to be smart, fast, physical, fundamental, do whatever it takes to leave no doubt. Close. <laughs> you left out the football player. Smart, fast, physical, fundamental football player that does whatever it takes to win. Whatever it takes to win and leave no doubt. And I think you have to do that as a parent, too. Okay. All so, right. All right. smart, fast, physical, fundamental football player that does whatever it takes to win and leave no doubt. My guys have that memorized. You will too by the end of the service. <laughs> <laughs> we teach. Um, we, we teach them. Well, what are some of the things that you have taught your children that are very, very important to you? My children? Well, I think the most important thing is uh, you got to have a value system in your own house and um, that can permeate when you're out of your house. And, and we'll get into it with discipline and things. We, you don't make up the rules in this house. God gave us the rules and your mom and I are gonna make sure that we adhere to those rules, but you don't make the rules. And, but you gotta start that when they're little dudes and they're throwing temper tantrums. You can't do it at 16 and go, hey, whoa, 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 Sally, you don't make up the rules. And she goes, ah, oh, well, well, you know, she starts going off on you. It's too late then, 16. It's never too late, but it's a little bit more difficult. Sure. And so, you know, you got to have a value system of discipline and, and uh, a value system of praying. And we're going to talk about all this stuff. But, but um, you know, the values, and, and you know what I think, really? I think you got to have them up. You got to have them on a wall, you know. Uh, Bibles aren't as good when they're in a drawer. Um, you know, we don't have the Ten Commandments up on our wall in our house. That's not what I'm saying. But we have a, uh, a family statement, you know, uh, that we love each other, we, spre- we respect each other. Um, you know, that with a picture of our family jumping around on the beach or something like that. And you guys get the point. Somebody's probably giving you a sermon about that. But if you don't have that, do it. Do it. Be creative. Y'all are creative. Do it. And, uh, you know, write a family statement and put your family Bible verse on there. Ours is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who gives us strength or in terms of my family, my team family, we can do all things through Christ. And it gives us the confidence to do the right thing. Right. And we teach them how to treat the opposite gender. We treat, we treat them how to delay gratification. We teach them how to succeed. But the most important thing we do is we teach them the love and admonition of the Lord. You have a, a favorite saying that you've turned into a webpage and it's called? Never flinch. And um, it came about, never flinch came about when I was working at Notre Dame. I used to coach football at Notre Dame with Lou Holtz. And um, before every game, Saturday night, or I mean Saturday, uh, Friday night, before every game, we'd have a team meeting and, and he would go through these seven different areas of how you win a football game. And if you can manage and master those seven areas, you have a great shot at winning a game. And then at the end of it, he would always say, now, fellas, listen, we're going to be playing in Notre Dame Stadium, and there's going to be 85,000 people watching us right there, okay? And then on TV, millions, millions, don't flinch. Don't ever flinch. You're going to get hit. You're going to get your helmet knocked off. You're going to get, you know, things are going to happen. There's a lot of crazy stuff that happens in a football game, and he said, don't flinch. And, I, and I'm sitting back there, and I used to write notes. I'm thinking, man, this guy, I, what a blessing I get to be around Coach Holtz, and so I'm writing notes, writing notes, and 
you know, close the book, put that away. But as you go through life and you're moving on, you start thinking about that. And he's absolutely right. And it's true with everything, you know. Having a baby, the first time you have a baby and you figure out you're somebody's dad, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> now what? Where's the book for this one? You know, you start flinching a little bit. You know, when that, when that doctor says, hey, coach, want to hold your baby boy? You're like, ah, okay, thanks, dude. You know, but um, those kids don't come with instruction manuals. That's why God gave us a Bible. So don't flinch. Never flinch. That's you're going to be faced with so much different adversity in your life, whether you're an adult, a child, an uh, athlete, a musician. It doesn't matter what you do, where you are in your life. You're going to have opportunities to flinch and never flinch. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, that's, a, that's his webpage, neverflinch.com, and, and give you some, some more information and, and, and more ministry if you want to go on there. Um, parents who love teach, parents who love discipline, Proverbs 13, 24 says, whoever spares the rod hates the child, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. Some people have taken that to extremes and they've said, you know, I've got a God-given right to use this implement on my child and, you know, the, the deal isn't any kind of abuse. I love um, uh, uh, the translation, the message gets at the core of what this says. A refusal to correct and whatever that is, for one, one kid it's this kind of correction, that doesn't work for every kid. So a refusal to correct is a refusal to love. Love your children by disciplining them. We want them ultimately to respond to God's authority. If they are going to respond to God's authority, they have to respond to parents' authority. A child that's allowed to defy parents and this doesn't begin when they're 16. This begins when they're about six months. A child that's allowed to flaunt their independence and defy the authority of a parent, if that goes unchecked, they're gonna have a hard time submitting to all forms of godly authority, whether it's the police, whether it's their marital vows, or whether it's the Lord. Now, discipline, uh, you have an interesting quote from Lou Holtz on that. Yeah, you know, he used to say that to our team all the time. Discipline's not what we do to you, it's what we do for you. And uh, kids don't get that. <laughs> they think you're like, you know, whatever. They're it's just, you're the mean old lady that just all you want to do is yell at me all the time. And then, nah, 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 you know, and you're like, listen, dude. We're doing this for you because we know what's going to happen. You know, we've been 16. You've never been 48, okay? So just listen, all right? Take it down a notch. Calm down. Discipline is what we're doing for you, not to you. And um, it's really, it's, that's what it's all about, you know? It's medicine. Medicine doesn't always taste good, but it's good for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just want to interject something here. This is Super Bowl weekend. You're an NFL coach. You could be at the Super Bowl this afternoon. You're in Lima, Ohio. What we're talking about Why here. Why wouldn't you be? What's that? <laughs> Why wouldn't you be? Well, that's right. <laughs> Where else is it be? What we're talking about here is far more important to you than football. No doubt. No, no doubt. doubt. This yeah. saves lives. Football's fun to watch on Sunday. and It's a great, it's a great game. Football's just a platform for me to, you know, I love it. I love it or else I wouldn't be doing it, you know, and. But it's a platform, and, and you have a platform, whatever it is. I don't know what it is or where, where you work or what you do, but whatever platform you have, use it to your advantage to, to uh, grow God's kingdom. That's the bottom line. You know, we don't, football's a cool game. It's a really cool game because it exposes a lot of things about a man's character, but um, just allows me a platform that I can get in front of those high school kids and share, so. Yeah. Yeah, so parents who love, teach, they discipline, and they model it, they live it. Yeah, fascinating um, scripture and, and narrative in, in, uh, in the Bible. Exodus 20, in the, in, the, in the listing of the Ten Commandments says, you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or the earth below or the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of their parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations for those who love me and keep my commandments. Now, 
you, you've seen this in reality. You've seen a, a, a grandfather who was abusive and an alcoholic who raised a son who either became that or was so scarred by it, the next generation was affected by it. And it can go down three or four generations. Now, it can be broken by the grace of God, but left unchecked. Uh, the sins of the fathers visit the sins of the sons and the daughters and, and the grandchildren. Conversely, he's trying to say, I am so much more gracious. I'll, I'll, I'll let grace flow a thousand generations for those who love me. Live uh, an authentic Christian life and you provide cover and blessing and protection for your children. I can prove it scripturally. First Kings. Uh, is the story of, uh, of David and Solomon. First Kings 11 says, the Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. And although he had forbidden follow, uh, Solomon to follow other gods, Solomon did not keep the Lord's commands. So the Lord said to Solomon, since this is your attitude and you have not kept my covenant and decrees, which I commanded you, I will most certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your subordinates. Nevertheless, for the sake of David, your father, I will not do this during your lifetime. Now, did David sin? Yes. But David never turned his back on the Lord. His was a sin of weakness. He repented of it. Not so with Solomon. I, I, because of your father, David, I will not do it during your lifetime. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. Yet, I will not tear the whole kingdom from him, but will give him one tribe for the sake of David, my servant, and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. I imagine there are some people uh, in this audience and there are some people watching on the internet that, that have sons and daughters living far from God. The best thing you can do for them, in addition to pray, is to model, is to live an authentic Christian life. Coach, you've probably seen guys in the NFL that give lip service to following Jesus and then act another way, and, and how disruptive that is to people understanding it. Have you seen, I don't want you to mention any names, but if, have you seen guys that talk it but don't walk it? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean... I've done it myself, so it's, you have to be intentful with anything you do, I think. Be intentional when you're raising your kids. Have a vision for what they, just like in the NFL, okay, we have to have a vision for what our team needs to look like to win the Super Bowl. And you have to have a vision for your team. Your team is your family. You have to have a vision for your team and what you want it to look like to win. You know, you can't have, you gotta have a, you gotta have a set of values, you gotta have a path, you gotta keep them on the path. They're gonna go sideways, you're gonna go sideways sometimes, but at least you know where the path is. And be intentful, be intentional, because otherwise you're just flopping through life, you know? Just flopping along. You're not gonna win many games that way. Mm. You're not gonna win. You're not gonna, you're not, your children are gonna be flopping around right behind you. And you're just not going to win. You're not going to win as a parent. Win, what's important now? W-I-N. What's important now? And what's important now? When that kid goes crazy or sideways or something, or yourself, you go crazy or sideways some, someday, what's important now? Snatch yourself up. Get yourself right. Because you're modeling. And he's looking at you. You can't do... You can't be random, you gotta be consistent. Random gets you random. If we called, if, if our playbook, if, if our playbook, we just called plays randomly out of it or just practiced random plays or said we watched Monday Night Football and go, oh, well that's a cool play, let's run that one. Well, you, you know much about it? No, not really, but let's do it, okay? Random gets you random. Same thing in life, when you're teaching your kids. You teach them this, you teach them that, you teach them this, you teach them that. You're not drumming. You're not the drum major of your own band. Your drum beat is like, ba -bum, boom, 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 boom. It's not boom, 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 boom. Who can march? Who can march? You think Ohio State's marching band can march? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Stanford's band can, but Ohio State's 
<laughs> you get it. You get the point. Yeah. You know, you talk about intentionality. I have been really challenged as I've listened to you this week, especially talking to coaches and, and uh, uh, about breaking plays down and, and, and some of the athletes talking about, okay, this is the footwork. And when you step here, your hands have to be here and your weight has to be loaded over this hip. And I'm thinking, that is so intentional. Every, every aspect of that to tenths of seconds. Yeah. And I thought, if, if we're intentional to that degree to move a, 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 an odd shaped ball that doesn't bounce well up a field, why are we more intentional with the things that truly matter? And what matters more than send the next generation in the right direction That's right. Uh, to follow Jesus That's Christ? Right. Uh, Details make you dangerous. If you do them right, you can be dangerous for a good cause. If you don't, you're dangerous to yourself. And I say that to my players all the time. Do the little things. Do them right. Details make you dangerous. I like how you're taking notes. Oh, I am taking notes. <laughs> when? <laughs> What's important now? Details make it dangerous. Sure. Um, parents you love teach. They model. They discipline and they pray. Yeah. They pray. Um, you pray for your kids every day. I do. Yeah. And uh, I, I challenge you guys out here to pray with your family. Let them hear you pray. Let them hear you pray. Pray with them. Grab their hands and Pray with them, because that, that shows you how much, that shows them how much you love them. If, you're, if you can grab their hand and pray with them and look at them and say, hey, Johnny, I am just praying for you that whatever it is that, you know, you diligently work on this test today. They just know that you care. And then ask them to pray back sometime. But have enough guts to do it. And it's not easy when you first, when you first, Challenge yourself to do it. Maybe it's easier for some. Wasn't easy for me. Wasn't easy for me. And but it's the most valuable thing that you can do with your family, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then enjoy our family. I mean, this is so important. But if we're not careful, we can get so ramped up with the intentionality that it's so important that we lose the fact that they are a gift from God and we are to enjoy them. Um, a couple things I've done to enjoy my kids. I, when they're growing up, I love to spend one-on-one -on -one time with each of them. In fact, I made it a goal. Every week, I'm gonna spend one hour with each of my four children, uh, just one-on-one, -on -one. out of the house, not watching TV, uh, going doing something they like, having conversations that were free-flowing, and so much good came out of that. I dated my daughter. I took her on dates and I opened her car door and, I, and I, I held her chair out and I said, this is how the man who will marry you has to treat you. When she was four years old, she said, I'm gonna marry you, daddy, don't matter. <laughs> That's right. And, and, and I, I used to say, okay, I'm gonna take you out. Uh, and, and when my oldest son was four, he said, daddy, boys don't date, we go on meetings. And so we began to have weekly meetings. meetings. You have a team and, meeting. And we've got, We've got so many wonderful memories on those one-on-ones. That's, that's one of the ways I've enjoyed my kids. How do you enjoy yours? Well, I think first of all, you can't even enjoy them if you don't discipline them and get them right. Because otherwise, I've, I've walked through the mall and I'm like, man, I don't know if I could love that one. You know, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? You've walked through the same mall probably. But um, we just, you know, we do so many things like, because we move around the country a lot, unfortunately and fortunately, we get to see a lot. But um, we're intentional. We're on a big fat field trip when we go around the country. And we just tell our kids, you're going to get more friends. It's not, you know, you're not going to lose the friends that you just moved away from because Facebook and all the social media that's available to us now. But you're going to get more friends and you're just going to, enjoy the new place that we get to go to and it's not always easy but it's always fun and we're on a big fat field trip we've got to see manhattan we've gone to broadway plays we've never seen that you know we've lived in california i've coached football from california to <laughs> new york city and everywhere in the middle too and all the way down in north carolina and recruited everywhere so it's been a big fat field trip it's fun and they're all part of it well, Coach, on behalf of about 400 student athletes and our church, uh, it means a lot that you came on Super Bowl weekend and invested in us. Thank Appreciate you so much. It. Would you thank our guests?